Hey, this is Dr. Jason West. I'm excited to share with you a couple tips of how to improve your gastrointestinal health. Check it out. If you've ever wondered how to make your stomach better, whether it's digesting foods better or absorbing foods better, then this is a video for you because nearly every chronic disease condition that comes into the office or that I'm aware of has to deal with your stomach health. And I have this funny little saying in the office, if you are what you eat, are you fast, cheap, and easy? So how many patients that are struggling with healthcare condition have stomach problems? The answer is all of them. Because if you can't get the right foods into your system or you can't absorb those foods, you're gonna struggle with your energy, you're gonna struggle with your vitality. And so one of my favorite things to do when people come to the office is to have a daily review. And a daily review means what time are you going to bed? Can you get to sleep okay? Can you stay asleep okay? Because if you can't sleep, you can't heal. This is one of the most important factors that I think most healthcare providers don't ask is to make sure that we integrate all of that together. Not only how are you functioning, but what are your signs and symptoms? Then the next thing is, is what do you eat for breakfast? And most of the time people are saying, well, I skip breakfast because I don't feel very good or I don't feel like eating. And my response to that is, is that's a learned or conditioned response because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And most people get in the habit of skipping breakfast because they'd rather get a little bit more sleep or they are addicted to stress. Now, when people say, well, what do you mean I'm addicted to stress? Well, if you walk outside and you see a bear, a snake, a tarantula, a couple things should happen. Your blood pressure should go up your pulse rate should go up, your pupils should can re restrict, and you get a hormone response from the adrenal glands that you have that fight or flight response. And I think a lot of people, in order to start the day, they need to get a little bit of stress because if they stress their system, they get a little bit of adrenaline or epinephrine into their system. And then all of a sudden they're ready to take on the day. So they put their body in a little bit of stress but when you do that, you rob Peter to pay Paul. There's basically a check that comes due where your mind's writing checks that your body can't cash. So you wanna be really careful that if you're skipping breakfast, it's detrimental to your health. And then the other thing is so important about breakfast is what are you putting into your system? Because so many people are putting a terrible junk food in their system called cold cereal. Now I jokingly tell people you would be better off to throw away the cereal and eat the box because at least you'll have a little bit of fiber when you do that. But there's empty calories in so many of the cold cereals available, which means that it's fats and it's sugars, it's quick carbs. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire. You get a big rev up and then you have a crash. And that means around 10 or 11 o'clock, you'll need uh, a diet soda, you'll need an energy drink, you'll need a donut, you'll need a candy bar because what's happened is we've put all this energy into our body, but it's not sustainable energy and it dies. And so when you're for gut health, what you should be doing is putting a normal, healthy, stick to your ribs type breakfast into your system. I really think it's important to get some protein in your system. I really like eggs. I really like cooked cereal if you're not having any celiac concerns or gluten sensitivities, but something of substance in your body in breakfast. Next thing I ask is, what are you having for lunch? And then you get the range of varieties of lunch and then dinner. And usually for most people, dinner is their most consistent meal where they're getting a protein, they're getting some veggies, they're getting some fruits, maybe they're getting some complex carbohydrates. And then I ask them, well, what are you doing um, before bed? And sometimes people are saying, I cheat or I have some type of snack or a bowl of ice cream. And then what that's doing is, is that's putting, again, a whole bunch of energy in the system. And if you're one of those people that eats a snack before bed and then doesn't eat breakfast in the morning, one of the things that we're training our body to do is to store up energy at night so that we can use it the next day. And then we call that stored energy the F word. Now we try not to use the F word in the office. It's F-A-T. We don't like to use the word fat in the office because it makes people a little bit uncomfortable and they don't want to talk about their metabolism and everything else, but we don't want to have stored energy. So if you're struggling with your metabolism and you're watching this video, you're having stomach problems, we really want to get your body on a schedule to make sure that you're eating consistently. Breakfast is the most important meal, then lunch, then last is dinner. Most Americans have it backwards. When we want to talk about gut health, the, one of the first things I ask people is, are you getting enough things into your stomach so you're actually able to break the foods down and start the absorption process? 
And then where that starts is in the mouth. So many people aren't chewing their foods enough. I've heard, read studies and talked to other doctors about how you should chew your food 30 times or 20 times or 40 times, but most people are in a hurry and so they wolf down their food, they take a bite or two, they chew it once or twice and then they swallow it. It makes the digestive process harder. So one of the tips that I tell people about improving your gut health is to make sure you chew your food for a long time till it actually is like a soup or a liquid instead of wolfing it down. Then when the food's in the system, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have some enzymes that are breaking down the food or some acid. Now, a lot of people, when they have an upset stomach, they do the wrong thing and they put an acid sopper or acid blocker in their system and that's something like calcium carbonate or Tums or uh, Nexium or Prilosec or Omeprazole. There's all these different things and my statement about that is if your food is in your stomach and it's not digested properly, what happens is the food will sit there and ferment and rot and decay and it can't go south. So it goes north or it expands outward. So you get your gas or bloating and it's a sign of incomplete digestion. And most of the time, if you'll speed up digestion with some type of proteolytic enzyme, which is something that breaks down protein and it breaks down fats and it breaks down carbs. It helps the digestive process. And if you're having heartburn and indigestion, I think it's a good idea to try that first. And you can even try it at home with some apple cider vinegar, some digestive enzymes to help break the food down. And then if you speed up digestion, many times you'll get rid of gastroesophageal reflux disease, heartburn, um, and, uh, and indigestive indicators. If that happens that you take a digestive enzyme or you take apple cider vinegar and it makes it so your stomach is too uh, flared up, it means that we have an overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. The vagus nerve is basically secreting too, many, too much acid and there's a little known mineral called phosphorus. And what phosphorus does is it helps to calm down or regulate the vagus nerve and it helps to calm it down that way. So when you're having gut problems, Chew your food. If it gets broken down correctly, then what happens is the lower sphincter opens and the food goes down into the next step. Now, there's some really neat natural medicines that help with irritated GI tissue. There's something called bottled sunshine from Nature's NX, and there's something called gut gold. Probiotics really help. And what's in those supplements that I mentioned above is there's vitamin A, which helps to heal and soothe the irritated GI tissue. There's vitamin D3, which helps the absorption. There's vitamin E, which is, helps to get the cells to regenerate and protects the blood and helps with cardiovascular conditions. And then there's vitamin K2. And vitamin K2 has this really neat natural healing effect on your GI tissue. If you're struggling with malabsorption or irritable bowel syndrome or ulcerative colitis, some of those other things, what we need to do is we really need to help protect those mucous membranes and get rid of food allergens. And this is what I start telling people. I recommend that you do a trial of avoiding wheat and gluten. Now, I don't know if everybody is, a, is sick with wheat and, and celiac disease. It seems like more and more people are getting that. And I think it's because what we've done with the genetically modified foods, we took goat grass and we mixed it with wheat and it created this wheat that is really hardy and it works, you know, grows really well. The farmers like it because the yields go up and the bakers like it because it makes the breads fluffy and stuff like that. But it's basically super glue for your GI system. It paralyzes the microvilli, which are the little things that help absorb food in the intestinal tract. And so you can do a lot of expensive testing for celiac and gluten sensitivity, which I'm not opposed to doing. As a healthcare provider, I really, really like data and information. However, most people I've seen have a really good response, may not be celiac positive or they may not be sensitive to gluten, but they just feel a lot better. And I've had people come into the office and say, you know what, Dr. West, I tried not to eat wheat or gluten for a week or two and nothing happened. And the research that I've been aware of is it really takes about 90 days for you to repair the microvilli that are paralyzed from gluten. And so if you're going to do a gluten sparing diet, you really need to do it for about 90 days. And it's not like a diet where you're off sugar, you're trying to lose weight, where you can do, you know, a couple of weeks of doing really well. And then you fail off the bandwagon at your daughter's birthday and you have a piece of cake or a piece of pizza or something like that. If you're trying to avoid gluten to repair your GI system and you go 40 days or you go 60 days, and then you have a significant gluten exposure, 
that calendar system has to reset and you need to go another 90 days. So the stricter that you are, if you're testing your body for gluten, the better off you're gonna be if you go at least 90 days. I've seen rheumatoid arthritis go away. I've seen um, inf inflammatory you know, arthritis improve. I've seen multiple sclerosis improve, brain fog improve. Almost everyone that I get to do a gluten-free diet improves on almost every level. I think it's a huge culprit. So irritable bowel syndrome, those lower GI problems do really well by missing grains, also with dairy. And I think it's really important to, to get rid of processed dairy, uh, especially the processed, you know, American cheeses and some of the really, really processed and refined cheeses are really, really detrimental to a long-term gut solution. And I think if you skip those, skip the white things. The only uh, modification I say on white things is cauliflower. I think cauliflower is the only white thing to eat, but uh, dairy, uh, wheat, it'll really help with your lower GI system. Now at the bottom of your GI system, when we start talking about bleeding in the bowels and anal fissures and hemorrhoids, some of the things that you can do that'll really help those is number one, uh, making sure that we have the right mineral balance. There's actually a really neat mineral formula that acts like a mineral cauterizer. It seals up all of the little bleeding stuff in your GI system called Vitaminerals 120. It's an amazing, safe, effective way to really help stop bleeding in your GI system. When you're having hemorrhoids, it's usually a sign of a deficiency of rutin factor, which is part of the vitamin C complex and also it's frequently provoked or aggravated by constipation. And if you're having constipation, it means that your GI system is not getting enough bile. Bile makes the GI system go faster. So it's like a great big conveyor belt. If you have too much bile or your body's trying to get rid of things, you have diarrhea or loose bowels. If you don't have enough, you have really, really slow bowels. So beet leaf greens and, and green leafy vegetables really help to stimulate your GI system, particularly your liver and your gallbladder, so that you'll go to the bathroom on a more consistent basis. And then witch hazel and colonsonia root, or what they call stone root, really help to tone up the vascular system and they'll help with hemorrhoids. And then the last thing is, is with anal fissures or external hemorrhoids, one of the most amazing things you can do is something called insufflation therapy, which is a, you take a little tiny catheter, you hooked it up to about 35 gamma ozone, a little bag of 500 cc's of ozone. It's a little bit socially awkward to tell people you've put this little catheter in their rectum up into their colon. Is it one of the most amazing things that we can do to heal and soothe irritated GI tissue at the very end of your gastrointestinal system in your rectal area. So to summarize everything that I said, number one, you want to make sure that you chew your food. Number two, you want to make sure that you have an enzyme that really helps to break food down or some type of hydrochloric acid. If that aggravates you, which happens about 20% of the time, it means you're deficient in a mineral called phosphorus. If you take phosphorus, what happens is it helps to downregulate the vagus nerve and calm down the hypersecretion of acid. When you're having mid-GI problems, irritable bowel syndrome, malabsorption syndrome, leaky gut, it usually means that there's type, some type of food sensitivity or allergy that's occurring, and the elimination of gluten and dairy is my first step for that. There's a really, really neat uh, book about GI health and how to treat yourself at home to recover from those things called Breaking the Vicious Cycle. It was written by a nurse that was really, really sick, and she figured out how to correct herself, and that's the beginning of the GAPS diet and some of these uh, uh, carbohydrate-sparing diets. Um, was one of my favorite books. It's about 25 or 30 years old, but it's absolutely worth it to get and you have in your library if you're having GI problems. And then at the very end of your gastrointestinal system, which is hemorrhoids, which is uh, bleeding from the bowels and anal fissures and stuff like that. There's insufflation therapy and then there's a mineral cauterizer that's available that's not a prescription where you really get really, really good outcomes. Now, I forgot to mention in the video in the summary, another thing that's really, really important to have for gastrointestinal problems is enough water. It's kind of like the Tin Man on The Wizard of Oz when he's out of oil. If your body doesn't have enough water and that doesn't count juice, it doesn't count soda, it doesn't count uh, sport drinks, it has to be water. It helps to lubricate your entire system. And I've seen people with chronic GI problems do really, really well by just adding enough water. And when people say how much, I usually tell them 60 ounces is a good place to start. If you want a miracle, what I recommend is try really hard to drink a gallon of water every single day for a week. Now, most people think, oh my gosh, that's impossible. 
Every time I've got someone to do that, they have massive improvements in their GI health. Hey, thanks for watching the video on how to improve your gut health. Remember, you are what you eat and when you are what you absorb. If you perceive value from the video, please like us and we'll see you on the next video.